<laughs> well, hello, TJ. I'm so happy to talk to you again. It's been forever. It's been forever. Between the pandemic and work, it makes it difficult. But I'm so happy to see you. I know, me too. This is a fun reunion. So I'm really happy you're here and that you're going to be on Illuminate Magazine. Very happy hey. about that. <laughs> well, one of the things I really wanted to talk to you about is you've been promoting your newest film, Under Wraps 2, a lot right now. That just came out. The premiere was at Disneyland. Tell me everything. It was amazing. We got to shoot uh, Under Wraps 2 uh, for Disney in uh, Vancouver, and we shot in the wintertime. It was freezing, and I was running around Vancouver wrapped up like a mummy trying to stay warm and doing the shoot and it was a blast uh we had a great director alex zam who really knew what he wanted he got it between the kids and the mummies and everything it is not easy to shoot something like that but we got it we had a blast i had an amazing acting partner jordan conley he is on abc's america's got talent and he's, okay. he's a stand-up comedian he's amazing and he's absolutely hilarious and it made the entire project really really fun and then we got to premiere like you said at disneyland which is amazing. Uh, Disney let us and our families in and we just got to ride everything. Wow. And then at the end of the day, we had the premiere and it was really, really magical. It was amazing. Wow. I've heard before about premieres at Disneyland, but I haven't known anyone that's gotten to do that. So I, when I saw you post about it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's a dream. Oh, amazing. It's so fun. I loved it. It's absolutely, it's wonderful. And I get to play a character named Sobek. He's an ancient mummy uh he was a high priest in his day and when he wakes up from his long sleep through a bunch of uh, uh, kind of mistakes he he wakes up and he realizes that the love of his life is nowhere near him so he goes and he finds her which is not a good thing in this story context because she has fallen in love with the other mummy harold and he's the star of under wraps too so sobek tries to steal her away yet again Oh, yes. I like it. Really? I like the villain origin story. Yes. <laughs> I know that Under Wraps was originally a film in the 90s, and then this has been the remake and reboot uh, to that. So had you seen the original, and had you known anything about that legacy going into it? No, I just knew that it was really, really popular, and everybody that I mentioned it to, like, I remember Under Wraps, and I'm like, it, it just... It was only out for a year. Like, no, no, no. It was back in the 90s. It was awesome. <laughs> so I saw the new number one. I didn't see the original, but everybody has very, very fond memories of it. It must be very, very popular because everyone loves it. I uh, bet. And we got a guy named Adam Wiley, who was the original kid in the original Under Wraps. He played a character in this one. He plays a jeweler mm -hmm. that we come into contact with. And it's really, really fun. And now he's a magician and a comedian and a magician. He's amazing. He'll just stand there and he'll be like, oh, oh, and he'll pull a card out of your head and then he'll split it into 50 cards. You're like, what? How, how did you do that? He's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. That's awesome that they brought him back and gave him a cameo. The main kid in, in the 90s, I think. So it was really, really so fun. Cool. That is so cool. I know that you do such intense research and diving into those roles, especially for the physicality of those characters. What was your process of creating a mummy? It was really, really fun. The audition process was intense. They'd seen literally hundreds of people. And then I got a chance to do it. And I was like, wait, they've already seen hundreds of people. What what, what could they have seen already? So you imagine all the things that you would do first. And then you forget all of that. And then you go on to the next uh, bunch of ideas. And you start to research. I've been to Egypt researching uh, one of my other scripts. And I've been to the Pyramids of Giza. I've been to the Pyramid of Saqqara. And... I've been to tons of museums and there are tons of museums and the city of the dead and all of those places. So I have a great respect for Egypt and its mythology and its history. And I love that they did all that stuff. So I wanted to give it the weight of a little bit of that culture. And so I started with what I had gotten to research uh, when I was in Egypt and I added to that. And I've always loved mythology and I've always loved these stories uh, that we carry as humans and the mummy story is one of the great stories, uh, and especially when you attach it to the idea of coming back from the dead for love. I thought that right. was amazing. So I attached those two ideas together, and it made a character that made sense. And then I started thinking about how does a body move if it's been asleep for 2,000 years? And what is his attitude about his current situation? 
he's probably upset that he is in this new world and doesn't understand things. So I just played with the ideas of what it is to be in the situation and what do I want and how will I get it? I love that you always do that kind of research for all of your roles. You are incredible. That's how you booked all the things you're in. I mean, you're Godzilla, you did Colossus and Deadpool. All those things you've done are because of the intense, extensive research you've done and all the hard work you put into it. And it really shows. It's really amazing. I remember when I was sitting next to you, uh, when we were watching Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and I looked over at you and I could see you watching it and you were like, critiquing it in your mind you were like looking at everything you're like oh that. you know like I could see it and I was just like that's why he's the master that's why he's the king of vocab thank you thank you no I love it I love ever since I was a little kid I, I'm an only child so you imagine and you pretend a lot when you're an only child you don't have the distractions of brothers and sisters and the playtime with them so I had my pets which I got that's how I understand animal movement behavior because they were my best friends. All the dogs that I had and the, and the cats that I had when I was a kid, all my attention was on them uh, when I wasn't doing school work. And then if I wasn't doing that, I'm out in the yard pretending things. I was either Batman or I was one of my dog's friends and we were playing as dogs. And I started to understand that they have their own language and they move differently than we do. And I had time to think about that. And now I try to bring some of that not only to the characters that I get to uh, bring to life uh, or help bring to life with the help of thousands of, uh, of CGI artists and special effects artists. And, and bring into life, literally, if they've been a mummy and been dead for thousands. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I also get to share those movement ideas and secrets and acting ideas and secrets with uh, new students who want to train with us at, at Mind's Eye Tribe. And uh, it's really fun. I love that. And the makeup. How long did it take for you to be in that makeup in your wardrobe? My makeup artists were amazing. Uh, they got up to a speed of about probably 45 minutes to an hour. Nice. Once I got it down, but it could take longer easily, up to two hours. But the outfit itself is one thing, and that's wardrobe. And we had to shimmy into that. And there were literally, I think there was like 65 buckles and clips and snaps on it. Oh. And she knew where they all were. She would go clip, clip, zip, clip, 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 zip, zip, clip, clip. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then You're just standing makeup, there. Yeah, and then makeup, they would work on it as well. And they're amazing to watch. Uh, they just start applying stuff and putting glue here and there and sealing it in. And then they put the jewel over my eye. And then they put a contact in, which is another technical person who does that. It was amazing. It was really, really fun. Wow. Because I love all the photos of your character. It's really cool to look at. And you're just like, I wonder what the makeup process was for that. We know that it takes a while. The first time you're doing the makeup, they have to make the mold of your face and head. That is actually more intense because they basically cover your clothes. You take your shirt off, cover the rest of your clothes, and then put tape around your chest. And then they'll just start to paste and pour goop all over your head and i think there's nose holes for you to breathe other than that they cover everything you're completely covered in this heavy slime that solidifies it warms up a little bit and it solidifies and then they crack it off of you after a while and then that's how they make the makeup pieces for you later that will be used and that happens weeks before the actual shoot but it's a pretty cool process makeup artists are their own breed of people and they have their own science and own art and it's really amazing it really is. I know some people get claustrophobic with that. Do you ever feel claustrophobic? I don't get claustrophobic, but I can see how you can. Your skin can't breathe for a little while. And yeah. I've been in a full body mold, which was, I mean, literally, they put you in a coffin and they they pour the stuff. And I, I think they gave me a straw to breathe out of. And I remember with that much stuff, whatever it was, latex or whatever it was, they poured yeah. on top of me. Um, It takes longer to set. So... I remember watching the entire movie of True Romance while I was waiting for it to set. And your skin starts to go, we can't breathe. And it feels right. like you crawl and you're like, okay, I need to relax. <laughs> but there's nothing you can do. There's nowhere to go. Right, you're just stuck there. It's crazy. You have you ever worn prosthetics? I have worn prosthetics before. I haven't, I haven't done the full like cast yet, though I've always been intrigued by that. 
I actually the other night went to Monster Palooza and I saw V Neil doing the Beetlejuice makeup and I was like, oh my gosh, because I loved Face Off, you know the show that she judges. Absolutely. I just, I just had such a fangirl moment seeing yes. awesome. her element. I want V Neil to do my makeup one day. Like that's that's a goal. That would be the best Halloween ever. To, oh. to have, to have, oh, that'd be people like that work on you is amazing. Oh, that'd be incredible. Now, you were touching on a little bit about your childhood and about learning like the animal movements and things like that. And I know that you have the background in dance and martial arts, but how did you get started in acting and mocap? When did that idea come into your mind? Um, I, I was a, a dancer for a very long time. I danced for a lot of projects. And to me, it felt like as, as much as I love dance, and you have to love dance to dance as much as we do or did people forget about it as soon as you're done doing it. As soon as you're off stage, it's gone. Unlike a movie, we'll talk about a movie or a television show all week, all month, all year long. We're still talking about Game of Thrones. But when's the last time you, you spoke about a dancer? Pat, five minutes past the, the TikTok video you watched. And so I was like, well, I want to make something that lasts longer in people's minds. I mean, I love the feeling of having people clap while you're doing it, but I want to have people remember the story that we're telling. So I thought I would try acting. And I started working on, because I could choreograph and because I could do martial arts, those two things together make it very easy to do fight uh, stuff, like martial arts and fight scenes. So I got into movies doing that during uh, the time of the kickboxing movies. I did tons of those kinds of movies. Uh, some of them were very, very low budget. Some of them were extraordinarily bad. Uh, many of them were. And then after doing 20 or 30 of them, I decided to go to acting school. In retrospect, I should have probably have done those things in reverse. But uh, I went to acting school and I walked in and I was so cocky. I was like, I've already done 20 or 30 movies. I don't even <laughs> recognize any of you people. Obviously, I'm the actor here. I sat down and then I was like, oh, my God, I am the <laughs> worst actor here. I know nothing. I very quickly realized that I knew nothing. I thought I had been in films, yeah. and I had, but I did not know how to act. And I found out at that time, and wow. And I was, it was a Meisner class. It was a very, very serious, very, very heavy Meisner class, which I, I eventually graduated after two and a half years. But oh, that first year was so brutal. It was so painful. And I had so many lessons to learn. I still do, but I feel much more comfortable now that I know more. But wow, it, there's a lot. It's its own art form. And I didn't uh, respect it as much as I should at first. And I learned the hard way that you need to, as with all arts, you have to. Later, uh, I got into motion capture. I was in a directing class and I just happened to meet somebody there. And they're like, hey, you want to help me with this new technology? And I was like, yeah, sure, I guess. And I didn't know what it was. Nobody knew what it was. And uh, what I did that day ended up being that company's logo. And they're like, hey, you did such a great job. Can you come back and, and help us with this video game? And at the time, he gave me a stack of uh, VHS tapes. And he goes, watch these. This is the entire seasons of uh, Star Trek, the original Star Trek with James T. Kirk, William Shatner. And I was like, okay, why? What? Why? You're going to play... James T. Kirk in this video game, and then some of the other characters. Then if you have any friends, can you bring them? We'll we'll just have a Uhuru, and we'll have a Spock and a Doc. And I'm like, yeah, cool. So we did that. I learned how to move and talk like James T. Kirk. And we went in, and William Shatner had already done the lines. All of the actors had already done the lines, and we lip-synced along with them. But we had to move in the way that they move. <laughs> So, and we did that and it was amazing. And it was really, really fun. And I learned a lot and that was the beginning and that was 25 years ago. Wow. So, so uh, yeah, we've done literally hundreds of video games and films since then uh, through the media of motion capture as well. Uh, and performance capture is a magical art. And if people watching this don't know what performance capture is, motion capture, it's you wear a very tight suit in a very empty room that is surrounded by infrared cameras and the infrared cameras flood the room with red light. And then all that red light or infrared light bounces off of your markers and then goes back to the camera. The computer can only see the white light. You look like a living constellation. You can see your body, but only the dots and all of those dots create a constellation of 
you as a human. And then they'll attach any model they want to it. The model could be Godzilla. The model could be Captain James T. Kirk. It can be Darth Vader. It can be anything that they want or need it to be. And then you make that character come to life. Wow. I still have yet to do motion capture, but I have taken classes and you have the best motion capture classes at your studio, Mind's Eye Tribe. For anyone watching, check them out. How did you decide to found your own company to teach people about motion capture? I love performing. And a lot of people had no idea about performance capture. And there's so many actors and so many actors want to work. They want to perform, but there's only so many characters in a movie, so many characters on a television show. A few years ago, films and music together made about $49 billion. In that same year, video games made $69 billion. And wow. video games continue to explode where movies have slowed down a little bit, especially because of COVID. You could still play video games at home, but you couldn't go to the movies anymore. So video games started needing actors even more than movies did. And actors were like, I want to work there. I want to do that. I want to just perform. And that's what we want to do. No matter what it is, we just want to perform most of the time. So people started asking me, so what is this thing you do? What? How do I get into that? And I'm like, well, I can show you. And so I developed a whole bunch of classes uh, along with my friends who are amazing teachers. We have an incredible swords master. We have an incredible tactical person who teaches guns and military movement and and how to do that kind of stuff we have someone who teaches creature fit and how to be healthy and strong while you're doing these kind of movements andy norris who who helps me run uh, mind's eye tribe action actors academy and then i teach a bunch of the classes as well which include you know hero's journey we're making one class specifically to teach you how to be a villain, how to move as a villain, how to bring power as a villain, because really? these are a lot of the weaknesses that we see when we're on stage working with people. They have never had to make these larger than life characters oftentimes. Even if it's a normal character, it's so far outside of their normal experience that it's right. very difficult to play somebody who's seven feet tall or to play a pixie who's 21 inches tall. You've never thought about those things. So we help understand those things. In the process, having taken multiple Mind's Eye classes, and all of the instructors are amazing, by the way. So everyone, if you're interested, go check them out. But it is interesting because when you are in the middle of the classes, you are doing things you hadn't really thought of. Like, which way is your body? What force is pulling your body in that direction? Is it your head? Is it your heart? Is it your groin? <laughs> it's, it's those three, right? Yeah, yeah. Is there great memory. That's great. That's great memory. <laughs> And it makes very, very specific characters. You can tell the difference. And you're like, ooh, what, I wonder what he's thinking about. Or, oh, who's this guy? You you can immediately look at them. And if a picture is worth a thousand words, we're able to control the picture. We're able to tell the story very quickly with a slight adjustment of the body. And hopefully that helps the actor or the, perform or the stunt performer or the creature performer uh, bring the story that the director and the team needs to life. Right, exactly. And all those classes you have really do bring those elements. You were saying that there are some weaknesses and missing points. Which things do you personally think are the biggest gaps in the industry that people need to learn for motion capture? It depends. Everybody has their own weaknesses and their own strengths. But the stuff that we see is the stuff that we make classes for. So in video games, most video games, although it is storytelling, it tends to be action oriented so you're going to do one of a few things and that's what we build skills around so we have swords we have weapons shooting weapons like firearms which are usually nerf on the set because we don't need real weapons but still since we're teaching firearms we have to teach all the safety that goes along even if you're holding a nerf you still assume that it is a real live weapon and you have to treat it as such because the people who use real live weapons are going to watch your product eventually. And they're going to be like, this person obviously has never held a real weapon before. And we yeah. don't want that for a performer. So we want them to understand how important and how much responsibility goes into holding a real weapon. So swords, uh, guns, creature movement, those are the big three. And then after that, uh, and, uh, and action, uh, basic action, punching, kicking, and getting hit and getting shot. You have to be able to tell those stories. So those four things are the big four. 
And then we also have heroes, we have villains, uh, we have magic. So when you're using these weird forces and you're lifting people up or force choking them or whatever it is, you have to know how to receive that kind of magical force, that supernatural force. And you know, you have to know how to blend it and not look silly while you're doing it. Because believe it or not, we've seen people you know, on stage just completely blow that part of the storytelling because up until that point in their life, they never thought about, how am I going to force choke a person? Why would you think right. of that? <laughs> right. So we help people with that. In our heroes class, it teaches you how to walk the hero's journey, but it also teaches you how to inhabit the superhero body and what does that look like? And why do superheroes stand like this? Hero pose. Yeah, why, why do they do this? There's a reason for it, but you have to have that reason come organically from the inside. You have to know why you're rising to this occasion as a superhero. And the superhero story is often a little bit different than a hero story. They're bigger. And so we have to show you how to inhabit that bigger space. It's such a fascinating thing. And those classes go so in depth with all of it. You know, we can't even talk about all of it right now because it's so much detail. But thank you for touching on that because I've always found that interesting. And one of your big characters, not only big as in you played the title role, but also physically large characters is Godzilla in 2014, Godzilla, and in the 2019 film, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. I know that you had always been a fan of Godzilla Tell us a little bit about your Godzilla journey. When I was probably five or six, my dad took me to my very first movie that I remember. That first movie was Godzilla versus the Smog Monster. Hedora is what they call it in Japanese. And already characters are bigger than life on a movie screen. But when I saw a bigger than life image of a bigger than life monster that was that dwarfed all the people on screen i was just like whoa and the bad guy was huge and the bad guy was really bad so when godzilla came to fight the bad guy i was like <gasps> and i was cheering for him although he was terrifying all of a sudden i was cheering for the terrifying thing fighting the more terrifying thing that was killing all the people and he won and it was such an emotional roller coaster for a, such a small child yeah. and that was my first exposure to such big ideas on such a big platform that it burnt into my retinas. It was burnt, burnt into my brain. And I was like, everything is possible. I, I, <laughs> I didn't know. And then came along Star Wars and all of these things. And that started the journey into imagination. My imagination exploded. And I was like walking around my yard and I was knocking over boxes and stuff like that, pretending to be, Godzilla and whatever else I can imagine. Uh, flash forward, uh, a friend of mine called and uh, he's like, hey man, uh, do you have any people who can do creature movement? And one of our classes is all about creature movement. So I gave him some names and creature movement is very specialized and very specific. Creature movement and special character movement. It's because you're moving in a way that Normal humans have no reason to move in or think about. So to bring those kind of creatures to life, we have a class called Beast Mode, and that helps you with that. And we have a whole system to walk you through all the things you need to know to understand how to move like a special creature. And I think about these things all the time, oddly. Uh, and I and that's why, <laughs> probably why I get hired to do a lot of them. I gave him some names, and two weeks later, he calls. He's like, okay, can you come down and help us with the creature stuff? And I thought what that meant was they had chosen somebody, come down and help them get a little close, dial them in a little bit. I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds great. Okay, cool. And the reason I couldn't do it, my I didn't give him my own name at the time because I was on another shoot. So I went down and I remember walking in and it was me and two other guys just standing there in the big open stage. And he turns to us and he goes, you're Mudo number one, you're Mudo number two, and you're Godzilla. And I was like, wow. It was awesome. It was so cool. So right then and there, we just got busy and started doing the work. We started mapping out how that works. How does the creature come to life? What does this version of Godzilla move like? How is it the same and how is it different? We have to figure out all of those things. And then the studios also 
kind of watching and giving us lots of notes. And then when everybody was happy, we started shooting. Wow. Did you find out right then that it was for Godzilla? Yeah. He literally said, <laughs> you're this, you're that. But before that, I had no I'm idea. I the movie. I'm meaning the movie. Did you know that you were playing the title role? Uh, yeah. Right then and there, I was like, <laughs> it was mind blowing. I had no clue that it was going to be as big as it was. <laughs> Godzilla was going to be as big as he was, whatever. But yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Massive creature. Massive creature. <laughs> But it was amazing. It was a great opportunity to revisit my childhood. And then I got to go back to my dad and say thank you because that's a full circle. And that is awesome. It really is. And you even got to go to Japan. Was it a Godzilla convention? Or yeah. was it? It was, yeah. It was Godzilla's 65th birthday. Wow. Um, Godzilla's 65th birthday. I got invited to go to Japan and meet some of the other Godzillas and talk to the public as. The current Godzilla, and I believe like nineteen thousand people showed up in in that that wow. square. Uh, There's a Godzilla statue there in Tokyo, and around that statue they had Godzilla's birthday party, and they had these artists. There's a famous Godzilla artist, and he did a giant mural. He did it in real time. I sat there and I taped it, and then <laughs> uh, I, I was signing autographs. I mean, people were coming up. And I was trying to sign the autographs. And then I got to the high point of it for me was the first Godzilla was played by an actor, Nakajima-san. And Nakajima-san, Mr. Nakajima, was the first Godzilla suit actor. And he was amazing. Well, I got to meet his daughter because he's not alive anymore. But his daughter, Sonoe Nakajima, was there. And I got to meet her. And she goes... My dad would have liked you. He would have liked your performance. And I'm like, ah! that because is the biggest compliment. It's the best. It's the best. It is absolutely the best. And he was the Godzilla that I watched growing up. That was the first movie. He was the first one that I saw. So it meant so, so much. So now, flash forward again, we have something called the uh, Haruo Nakajima. That's his full name. Haruo Nakajima Action Actor Scholarship for Mind's Eye Tribe. So... Every year we find uh, a performer or performers that we believe embody the spirit that he brought to the screen and they may need a little help. So we want to give them that scholarship so that they can come take our classes and be the next generation of storytellers on screen to do all of the magical things that we love people to do on screen. I love that. And I love the complete full circle story to that. Yes. It's like dreams come true. Like that's what that yes. whole story is. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that story. It makes me really happy. And you also have gotten to play another character that I completely adore and have always adored. Darth Vader. Yes. Uh, do I have a Darth Vader? He's back there in the red. He's glowing. Oh, I see him. Back here. He's right there. You see him. But yeah, that's actually the helmet that I used uh on the day because the first time I shot it I believe we were at ILM in San Francisco and it was for something called Vader Immortal which is a quest to it's a a VR experience you go into the quest and it is terrifying you get caught by a tractor beam they pry open your door and they take you to prison and then in the prison the door opens up and you hear this and you see this huge figure walk towards you and it walks at you and He's like seven feet tall. So in VR, you're, <laughs> you're trying to back up away from him and you can't. There's nowhere to go. And you're like, and he talks down to you and he goes, you will tell me what I want to know. And you're like, ah, it's amazing. <laughs> but I got to play the character. So even though I played it, I'm just like, ah, I was still freaking out. It was, it was amazing. And again, it's something that I grew up watching, but it is pure magic to get to, to embody probably one of the most iconic villains in cinema history and i got to do it twice i got to do it for this and another project and it's amazing i'm really really fortunate that i get to tell these amazing and wonderful stories i love it i love that too is there any other iconic character that you haven't yet played but you're still like i need to embody that character you know i've played the majority of my childhood my cinematic childhood and i cannot ask for more uh i mean there's godzilla and darth vader and the predator and uh 
Iron Man and Groot and Rocket Raccoon and Black Panther. I've gotten to step into their skin and do something for each of those projects. Not always the entirety of the thing. I mean, obviously Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, but you get to do it for a little while and you're just like, Hey, right. Iron Man! And, you're, it's, uh, hey. <laughs> and so I've gotten to do so many amazing, iconic characters, even Colossus. Colossus yeah. was one of the coolest of the X-Men when I was a kid. I grew up reading him and I always thought he was super cool. Him and Wolverine always used to work together in the comic books. So I love that. I would love, I mean, there's, I, I love the bad guy named Galactus. I would love to get to do something with that, but I don't know if he's part of the Marvel Universe yet or if he ever will be. Yet. Maybe. I'll keep my fingers. Yet. Up. Still, yeah, there's the Silver Surfer, some of my favorite characters. So I would love to see them come to life again. But yeah, I think it's really awesome. <laughs> All of those roles take so much physical energy. Has there ever been a character that has been so challenging in terms of how physical this character is and how much movement and motion there is, really physically demanding? Have you had a character that's been particularly challenging? Sure. I mean, movies can be easy by comparison to video games because there are two major career paths in video games because I've been doing it for so long. I do both, but most people don't do both. Most people either do cinematics, which is one career path, which is the little movies, the little cutscenes in between the video game. And then on the other side is every single movement that all the characters make in all the video games. And that's called uh, navigations or locomotions or in-game movements. And to be any character and have to do all of the movements for a character, that can be challenging physically because it is a lot of energy to put out. On one game, not too long ago, on one game, I, I worked five days and I walked, ran, crawled, jumped, and sprinted the equivalent of two marathons in five days. And I was pouring sweat every single day. And that was just one character. And I have to do that for several characters. So sometimes I was sprinting backwards. Sometimes I was sprinting in circles. And my Fitbit was like, stop moving. Going off the ring. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. So physically, that's one thing. Then if I have to hold a character, especially if the character is relatively new and I don't know it well, you've heard actors say they go into that place. For instance, Sobek, this Disney character, he was in a dark place. And because I want the performance to come through all of the makeup, it's got to be somewhat real. So I'm carrying almost a little dark cloud over me. So the entire time I'm in Vancouver, I'm not the friendliest person in the world because I have some part of Sobek in the back of my mind. And I'm like, okay, I got to keep this character with me. So there were these wonderful actors that I got to work with, but they're very young, they're kids. And I didn't get to hang out with them too much because Sobek is not their friend. So it's hard to be like, hey, 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 and then turn around and go, I'm evil. <laughs> I didn't want to try to separate them. So uh, I got to hang out with them a little bit and that was super fun. I got to celebrate my birthday with them. They actually held a surprise birthday party for me, which I totally did not expect. Oh, nice. But there's also this slightly dark cloud with me as I'm there. And then I was so happy once I was done with the character, I could let it go. And I was like, I could be me again. But for the most part, you have to have all this gravitas and I'm carrying a bit of that character with me. Now, if this were a te television series, for instance, or a theater, a theatrical run, you've been the character for so long that you can take it off and put it on like a mask. But right. at first, this character was a priest and he was in love and now he's been betrayed that's a lot to just pretend to do. I could pretend, but it doesn't feel right. And the kind of acting, the least that I'm trained in, it doesn't feel right. So I right. hold a little bit close. I hold on to a little bit of it. And then you can feel that bit of dark cloud. So even when I'm like, good morning, that's whereas normally I'm like, hey, what's up? Oh. I, I didn't have all of that. I have this dark cloud with me. Also, I was freezing. So that. Right. <laughs> yeah, you were in Vancouver in the winter. <laughs> and I'm from Hawaii, so I'm not used to the cold. You're like, this is why? Why is it so cold? 
You're and like, that's... I want my money. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well played. I want my mummy. Well played. Did not see that one coming. That yeah, was good. I, had, I knew I had to at some point throw a mummy joke at you. <laughs> hey! Just was waiting for the right opportunity. That was excellent. Excellent. I mean, I was keeping that one under wraps. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> I just got root beer in my nose. No. <laughs> no. That was awesome. Thank you for that. Well played. You're welcome. Um, you talked about for that role, you traveled to Vancouver, but I know you've gotten to travel for some other roles and conventions. What are some of the coolest places you've gotten to go to? Because you've had one of those careers where you actually get to travel for some oh, of it. Amazing. Everywhere is a new adventure. I mean... Before I did ILM, I don't think I spent that much time in San Francisco. So San Francisco is a completely different vibe. It's LA meets New York. It's interesting. It's really, really interesting. Then I've been to the Philippines for action movies, and that's an entirely different culture. The people are amazing. They're absolutely wonderful. I've been to, I've been near Machu Picchu in Lima, Peru, and those cultures are spectacular. Uh, I've gotten to go to Egypt doing research for writing. Uh, I've gotten to go to Vietnam and Cambodia uh, near Angkor Wat, where it's one of the seven wonders of the world. The temple complex at Angkor Wat is spectacular and it's ancient. It used to be overgrown by a jungle. So those places are absolutely magical. I just got back from Hungary. That was incredible. There's a movie coming out soon. It's an action movie. I don't think it's been officially announced yet so i won't say much about it but it's going to be spectacular and the cast is really really cool and the action team as well is really really cool so i get to work with them so yeah all of these places hungary egypt vietnam cambodia vancouver they're all very very different and each one is its own adventure and there's there's things to see and people to learn from and people to meet and food there's all kinds of amazing food so it depends what part of those things that you love. And I don't love to travel. I love to be in other places. The traveling right. sucks, <laughs> but to be in the other places, that is pure magic. And I do love that. I love experiencing new cultures because you learn so much. You either appreciate more what you have, or you're like, well, I didn't even know this existed. This is right. spectacular. Some places have their own beauty, which you can only understand once you're there. And every place has something like that. Right, exactly. Like I just got done in June, I filmed something in Tulum and I loved meeting the locals in Tulum, getting to spend time there. And then I only had one day that was free to actually like do anything you know, touristy. I went on a tour, we went from... Chicha and Itza and we went um did you go to the pyramids yes I did you saw it yeah was it cool I haven't been there so cool. apparently they stopped letting you actually go up it so you no longer can go inside of it you no longer can climb up it but they do have photos and they do talk to you about it and it is majestic to look at it is amazing That's awesome. and to think about how the Mayan people built that is just incredible uh. and I got to go to two little Mexican villages, and I got to go to a cenote, which was a hundred feet deep. The drop down was big, but once you were inside of it, what is it, the, a cenote? It's like a cave pool thing. Ah. It's hard to describe. They're very, very popular thing in Mexico. So I highly recommend if you ever go to like Tulum or the Yucatan areas, go to some cenotes because they are majestic. When we were up there, you can see down below, and you can see all the water down there. You have to go downstairs. Once you're down there and you can jump into the water, the water itself is 100 feet deep. So we were required to wear life vests. Whoa. Yeah. That's awesome. How, is the water warm? It's cold. But it's so worth it because you get such an adrenaline rush that your body's like, I'm hot. And That's <laughs> amazing. That is super cool. Is yeah. it spooky that it's 100 feet deep right underneath you? It's a little bit eerie but it's also really cool too because you're like i am jumping into this natural formation you know that it's not built it's not man-made it's just naturally there and there's fish swimming around in there 
You uh, should go. I'll send you the name of the place I went to. And yes, yeah. you Thank should go to that one. It's so cool. But what you're talking about is getting to meet those people and experience those cultures. And like you were saying, the beauty that you're finding there that you may not see if you're just looking at pictures online, it's incredible. So I was definitely jealous when I saw your pictures in Hungary. I was like, oh, I want to go. I want to go and travel to some of the places you've been to. They look amazing. You totally will. Your schedule is going to be nuts. I have no doubt. It's going to be great. Thank you. So what is some advice you have for performers who are in either the acting world, the motion capture world, or even stunts? What's some advice you can give to them? The simplest advice is to network. I am an only child, and as a result, I'm kind of an introvert, so I hated networking. I did not like it, and I'm still not a fan of going out and doing things, but the one thing I can honestly say is I have never not benefited from just being at a place and talking to the people. It has always, always benefited me every single time, as much as I hate to admit it. So that's one thing that people need to do is just go out and meet the people that you're going to eventually work with because you can't do any of this alone. It is frustrating, but that is part of the job is to get out and meet the people that you're going to work with and start training with them, whether that's acting or stunts or it's action or everything in between. Just get your tribe, get your tribe and start to connect through them because they will help you eventually get to that place that you want to go. Exactly. I mean, there are so many wonderful people out there that you can connect with. And at some point, it starts once you know those people really well, you're like, how did I even meet you? I can't even remember how I met you. I don't remember the first time because we've now been friends for what, like five Five years years? now? Yeah. 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 We've been friends for a while. It's it's wild. But but yeah, absolutely. And that's part of the magic is that you start seeing people over and over again. Like if you think most people have a gym membership, you go to the gym. And you see faces in the gym. You never talk to them, but you see them. And then one day you are at the store and you're like, hey, and it's like you guys know each other. It's only from the gym and you've never talked to each other, but all of a sudden you know each other. Well, the movie industry and the video game industry and the television industry is similar, but very much smaller. It's so much smaller. So if you start seeing those faces because you're going to the places that you need to be at, eventually you're going to bump into them and be like, hey, why haven't we worked together yet? We should probably talk. And that's all that this is. So strengthen your network, create your network if you don't already have one and start to be an active part of it. Don't just be, will you hire me for a movie? No, start making yourself useful to be in that network because they will understand that and they will pull you in if you're you know, a giving person in that network. Exactly. And even if you aren't a direct asset to them, They might have a friend who needs you for whatever piece of the puzzle you can bring. They might say, oh, I know the perfect person for this. I have a friend. Here you go. Absolutely. Never know. I'm going to wrap this up because you are taking the world by storm. (laughs) Dab. Um, So what are some projects you have coming out? that we can talk about there's so many things but we can't talk about them because they're all nda'd Uh, i'm working on four video games right now two films and i'm sure one of these is for television so they're all nda'd until they're done but i'm so excited they're massive some of them are huge and really 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 excited aside from that the great stuff that we're doing at Mind's Eye Tribe Action Actors Academy. We have so many cool things. In fact, we have an open house coming up. I think it's the week before Thanksgiving. So it's like bring a friend day. If you want to come and try out all of the workouts and classes, you can come for free and just try it out to see what it's like here in Los Angeles. So we get to do all of this fun stuff and meet incredible people. And uh, that's what it's all about. What day is your open house? It is November 19th. So just go to the website and you'll see Uh, notifications for it uh, and you can sign up for it and come try all of our classes uh, on the same day November 19th uh, in Sherman Oaks awesome any last words for our viewers well if they're actors or performers or stunt people or creature performers of any kind have your dream stay focused keep training and do not give up I love that 
where can people find you on social media? Easiest is to go straight to the Minds Eye Tribe Action Actors Academy at mindseyetribe.com. I'm also on Instagram, uh, Storm's Eye, or Minds Eye Tribe. Either one of those is fine. And Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here. It's been so long since I've gotten to talk to you. So it's so been- good to see you. And I'm so happy you're doing so well. Congratulations. And thank you for having me. And congrats on all of your projects. You're oh. on a roll. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to get to do what we love. And I'm really, really happy that I get to continue to do it and to share those ideas and skills with some of the people who want to do it as well and the next generation of people. It's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, TJ. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>